Good morning and welcome to Coffee Break with Praise Center. Thank you for joining me this morning. Um, thank you for those of you that are here with me in the house and those of you that are joining me via your stream. I hope and pray that you've had a wonderful morning thus far and I hope that the rest of your day will be blessed just because you decided to um, join me for Coffee Break. <laughs> so grab, go ahead, grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab um, your pencils, grab your journals, and definitely grab your Bibles because I have a lot of scriptures for you today. Also, we're going to be taking an exam, a uh, little quiz, so grab some extra sheet of paper, a uh, sheet of paper, so we can do that. Let's open up in a word of prayer and let's get right into our lesson today. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your kindness and your tender mercy. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your favor. God, we thank you for all things on this day. We ask, God, that you be with us today as we come not only to fellowship um, and to socialize with one another, but to also dig into your word. Help us, oh God, to apply these words that um, will be laid out today. Apply them to our lives that we may grow closer to you, that we may become better Christians, stronger Christians for you, oh God. I ask a special blessing on those that are joining me on today. I ask that you continue to bless them. Prosper their way, oh God. Give them the desires of their hearts. Oh God, meet their need in a special way this day. God, we thank you for all that you are doing in our lives, all that you have done, and what is yet to come. We thank and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's um, jump right into this discussion today. Uh, we're still in our High Heels and High Places uh, series. <clears throat> still time to order the book. Still the resource to have. Also, we are in chapter 28 of that particular book. Uh, Take a Stroll with Your Mat is the title of that chapter. Now, this particular topic today is so big, it was kind of hard to condense it into the nuggets that I like to give to you all, but I did. I tried. I tried. So after this hour, um, I ask that you take some time, take some extra time to dig deeper into this topic today, okay, because I really believe that it's beneficial and I, I'm going to encourage you to um, revisit this topic often. So the question I have for you today, which leads us to our discussion, is what's, what's your temperature like today? What's your temperature like today? I need you to write that question down in your journals because that's a question you're going to have to revisit time and time again. What's your temperature like today? You might need to revisit that question <clears throat> often in a week before you step into your high places each day, before you step into ministry each week, before you step into the house after work. You might need to ask yourself that question. What's your temperature? What's my temperature like today? Temperature, temperature. In the United States here, uh, most colds happen between the months of, uh, well, between the times of fall and winter. Begins late August or September and, you know, goes through winter. Typical flu season is between, what, about October and May. And so, we, and we typically see an increase in December. So, so many thermometers, and I should have had a thermometer here with me this morning. So many thermometers will be used during those times to check physical temperatures, right? During those times. But of course, today, I'm not actually talking about what's our natural, our physical temperature. But I'm talking about, the question is about our spiritual temperature. Write down 2 Corinthians. And I tell you, we're going really into this today. Not a lot of fluff. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. And I want you to write that right next or underneath that question. What's your temperature like today? It says, examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding to your faith 
and showing the proper fruit of it all. Mm -hmm. Examine and test and evaluate your own selves. You know, I like to tell you often, just check yourself. Just about, you know, examine yourself to see whether you are holding to your faith and showing the proper fruit of it. The proper fruit of your faith. We're going to be talking about that today. Okay? I need you to be holding on to your faith and showing the proper fruit of your faith. You know, I'm all about etiquette and doing things in properly, right? <laughs> it's not a proper way, but pro doing things properly, okay? So we're going to take a few minutes to examine ourselves in this discussion and see what our spiritual temperature is. See what our spiritual temperature is. So there are two churches, two churches that you probably have heard of. Two of the named seven churches mentioned in Revelation, Revelation, um, were, were seriously unaware of their spiritual temperature. Spiritually, un, just unaware, just totally unaware of their spiritual temperature. The two churches, the church of La Laodicea, 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 and the church in Ephesus. The church at Laodicea and the church in Ephesus. Laodicea is the church, uh, it is a picture of a worldly church that has all, um, what I found it says, has all the trappings of religion, but whose heart is clearly filled to the core with the world. They were what we would consider the worldly church. If you read over in Revelation chapter 3, and I believe it's about verse maybe 14, it starts talking about the church of Laodicea, okay, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, this particular church was trapped in, you know, all its, all its trappings of religion, but whose heart was clearly filled to the core with the world. They were, they could be considered a mediocre church. Who just really rested in their materialistic stupor, their materialistic spiritual stupor, okay? The things they had, the things, the money, the prosperity that they had. You could tell them apart from, you could not tell them apart from anyone else, the world, um, anyone else, the world outside of the occasional church activities okay much like the world doing the kind of the worldly things got the worldly music going on things like that the only reason, the only way you could you know you could the only way you can tell them apart was by their occasional church activities you know past his anniversary oh <laughs> first lady's day the, the church activities okay now the church in ephesus on the other hand, was a church that was very into um, their doctrine. You know, they defending the truth, devoted to evangelism, devoted to the church and, and everything. So, and most of us will look at the church in Ephesus as a very healthy church, a very vibrant church. However, church in Ephesus was a church that really had lost its fire. It was a church that was functioning and functioning well, but functioning, um, doing the right things, but functioning without realizing that they were going through, just going through the motions and doing things just because, because this was the thing to do. Had no connection with it. Both of these churches were unaware of their spiritual temperature. So I ask you that question today. What's your spiritual temperature like?
we're gonna take a quiz so we can check that just to kind of give you a gauge <laughs> okay simple questions I want you to write yes or no to okay so those of you that are here with me you can answer the quiz right here um, those of you that are on you stream kind of listen to the um, question put the number write the um, yeah you won't probably have time to write the question but write yes or no next to that number okay so number one <clears throat> Did you read your Bible every day this past week outside excluding the church services excluding church services did you read your Bible every day this past week but don't include the times you read it during church services <laughs> yes or no number two did you pray to the Lord regularly every day this past week not including church services yes or no did you pray to the Lord regularly on a regular basis every day this past week and you can't include church services yes or no number three when you had a chance to speak of the word of the Lord did you do it when you had a chance to speak of the word of the Lord did you do it yes or no and be honest with these questions don't write the answer that you think is right but you're examining yourself so check yourself number four have you prayed for anyone else beside yourself in this past week have you prayed for anyone else besides yourself in the past week yes or no don't give any explanations about any of the answers just yes or no number five have you honored God with your money in the past week or for some the past past month some of us give monthly. Mm -hmm. Have you honored God with your money in the past week? Number six. Have the words that have come out have come out of your mouth in in the past week been encouraging? <laughs> have the words that have come out of your mouth have your words been encouraging this past week? Number seven, have you handled that difficult person or situation in your life with loving patience? Have you handled that difficult person or situation in your life with loving patience? Number eight, have you forgiven that one person that did you wrong or that one that put your put their mouth on you or that got the promotion from scandalous ways instead of you? Have you forgiven that one person? Yes or no? Have you forgiven that person, one person that has done you wrong in the past? Number nine, are you impatient? Are you impatient? Yes or no? Ten, do you get angry quickly? Do you get angry quickly? The last one, number eleven, 
Have you been putting down leadership because they are not doing what you feel they should be doing? Yes or no? No explanation. Have you been putting down leadership, your leadership, because they are not doing what you feel they should be doing? Yes or no? So take a look at those. Take a look at those answers. Yes, those yes or no answers. Okay, and we're going to grade. Okay, so what's your grade? If you answered yes to the numbers 1 through 8, so if your numbers 1 through 8 have all yes on them, and the numbers uh, 9 through 11 have the answers no, then you have scored 100%. All right, so look at it. If your answers from 1 through 8 say yes, and from 9 through 11 say no, then you have, your score would equal 100%, which we would call normal. We will we'll label as normal. Now, are you anywhere, anywhere near 100, that 100%? On your quiz, any of you? <laughs> how far below normal, because we're 100 normal, how far below normal did you fall? Missing maybe one or two, maybe even working on three. <laughs> you can still be you can still be called a Christian or considered a child of God, but you just you need to know. You need to check your temperature because you have now fallen below normal. See, in the physical, your physical body, if your temperature is below normal, it's not a good thing, right? Your temperature falls below normal when certain things occur, when, when, when um, you know, you're exposed to a cold or shock, okay? It's not when, when I... When you um, for, uh, use alcohol or drugs, your temperature, your body temperature lowers. Certain disorders like um, diabetes and hypo, um, what, thyroidism causes your body temperature to lower. Low body temperature is also present in, um, in, with, a, with infection that you might see in newborns or older adults or frail people. Okay, low body temperature is not a good thing. Okay, it's not a good thing. So if it's not a good thing physically, a low spiritual temperature might not be a too good of a thing either, right? <laughs> Write down Revelation um, 3 and 16. Revelation 3 and 16. It says, so because you are lukewarm, and it has, in the Amplified Version, it has parentheses, parentheses and it says, spiritually useless. And neither hot or cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. And then it says, in parentheses, rejecting you with disgust. Hmm. Mm -hmm. If your temperature is below, your spiritual temperature is below normal, below normal. We would call you a lukewarm Christian. And just like you don't like lukewarm water, God can't stand a lukewarm Christian. So maybe we ought to check our temperature more often. What would cause us to have a low spiritual temperature? These things here, you know, getting angry so quickly, being impatient, not honoring God with our time and with our money. 
Uh huh. Not praying, praying only for ourselves and no one else. Mm -hmm. Beating down leadership because they're not doing what we feel that they should be doing. We know all the answers. We know, yeah. Not praying regularly, not reading our word regularly, not having community and having relationship with God. Not get taking up the opportunity to share the word of the Lord with someone, anyone in need for that matter. These things will cause our spiritual um, temperature to lower. These things, those, those things would. And there are many others, things that would disconnect us or change our relationship would, in, in, in kind of a negative way, would, would lower our, our temperature, our spiritual temperature. So we should constantly check our temperature more often. Mm -hmm. If you have your book, on page 166, you highlight that page. Um, it says, she writes, if we want to walk in high places with God our Father, we need to watch our temperature. She says, I have to ask myself if I'm often already at simmer. Do I boil over at the least provocation? Or is love keeping my patience high and my pot cool? Loving patience is quick to listen, quick to forgive, slow to boil. Something to think about. How do you respond to things? Do you always respond uh, so uh, negatively? You have a negative thought about everything, negative answer about everything, so harsh. Your words are harsh. Your your hands are harsh. Everything about you is just harsh. Um, you know, always a put down. You always got a comment, uh, 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 criticism, all the time. <laughs> you know, you, you you are everyone else's biggest critic. Then yeah, that's just the way you are. So you say that's just the way God made me, and then. You know, you can't change the way that I am. Are your words, are your actions, are they encouraging, building up, or are they tearing down? If they're tearing down, you might be you might want to check your spiritual temperature. Something needs to be you're not healthy spiritually. Okay? You're not healthy spiritually. And so you need to work on some things. It, you know, some, um, take care of some things. You know, some things need to be worked on. You're taken out of your life, turned around. Now, what can we do? What can we do to keep our temperature close to norm, as normal as possible? And sometimes you're not going to get that 100%. Yeah, sometimes... We are impatient, and we get there sometimes because of certain things. But sometimes we get to, you know, people come that are really difficult people to deal with. Sometimes it just, no matter how hard you try, you try to <laughs> talk nicely. You try to, you know, entertain their company, their presence. But sometimes it just gets so, you know, because of things that are going on inside of you, things that are going on around you, and you just might not respond or entertain well like you should be. Sometimes it happens, but it should not happen all the time. It should not be a reoccurring thing for you, a thing. That should not be your thing. Every time someone mentions your name, oh, that's how she is. Yeah, she's just like that. You know, she just talks about people. She just does this to people. She don't care. Ah, yeah. That shouldn't be your thing. Hey, this is how she just handles people that way. So you just have to get used to it. No, that should not be your thing when, when your name is called out. So you need to check your temperature. Check your spiritual temperature often. When you walk into the house, uh, does the whole mood change because your bad attitude has just walked in the house? Sorry you've had a rough day at work. 
but you need to check your spiritual temperature and you might need to check it before but when you enter the office building <laughs> You might need to check your spiritual temperature before you enter there. And I guarantee a lot of times uh, we, 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 we forget that we need to check ourselves. Check, check, just check where we are. You know, where am I mentally? Where am I emotionally right now before I enter into this, this arena? You know, because I don't want what's coming out of me to be negative. I don't want what's coming out of me to be wrong. I don't want what's coming out of me. We should say this. Uh, I don't want what's coming out of me to hurt or harm or destroy anyone. But my endeavor is to be a normal, a, a productive Christian and build up and lift up no matter where I am, no matter what, what's going on around me. We need to check our temperature, our spiritual temperature. So how can we keep our temperature as close to normal as possible? I'm going to give you some things, and this is where the scriptures are really going to come in. So you might want to grab your ink pen and your journal, and I might not be able to um, read all of these scriptures because there are a lot. There are a lot. Um, but I am going to give them to you. So in your private time, your devotional time, I say, go back. And look at these scriptures because we all need to examine ourselves daily. Sorry, but we do. So much is going on around us and so much <clears throat> we can come in contact with that just rubs off on us. And sometimes we just don't even know that it has rubbed off on us. And then we get to acting all kind of strange and crazy. And we're like, what is going on? Check yourself. Examine yourself before before you start handling your children, before you start handling your husband, before you start handling ministry, check yourself. Check your temperature. Make sure it's right. Make sure you're you're all right. Make sure you're healthy. That yeah, okay? You gotta be healthy. I want you to I'm gonna start. How do we how do we stay close to normal? <laughs> as, as normal as possible. I want to start with examine your heart. Examine your heart. Write down these scriptures. Jeremiah 17 and 9. Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The human heart is the most deceitful of all things. And desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Check, examine your heart. Don't allow things to come inside of your heart that will cause you to be deceitful. That will cause you to be just desperately wicked. Examine your heart. Because it can happen just like that. Once it happens, it begins to fester. And it begins, what's settling your heart begins to, and we'll get there, begins to fester. And then eventually it has to come out. Write down Psalm 66 and 18. Psalm 66 and 18. It says, if I, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Because he doesn't like lukewarm Christians. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. Write down Psalm 40 and 8. Psalm 40 verse 8. It says, I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Your instructions are written on my heart. So I take joy in doing your will. Write down Hebrews chapter 4, verse 7. Hebrews 4 and 7. It says again, he limited a certain day saying in David today after so long a time and is said today if ye will hear his voice harden not your hearts today when you hear his voice don't harden your heart Romans chapter 10 verse 1 Romans 10 and 1 
says dear brothers and sisters the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved you should think on others you should have a desire that that longing in your heart should be for others to come to know Christ and so therefore the things you put inside of your heart things you're allowed to fester and to grow your heart won't be things that will destroy and keep those others away from knowing God. Hmm. In order for us to um, be able to stay to some close as normal as possible, um, to our temperature close to normal, close to normal is what we're striving for. We need to examine our mouth. Examine your mouth. Examine your mouth. If you have your book, turn to page 165. Highlight the bottom. 165. It says, Our master designer wants our responses to others to be wrapped in loving patience. It's a special, blessed way he's designated for us to live. Our responses, our words should be wrapped in loving patience, no matter how difficult a person may be. Wrapped in loving patience. Examine your mouth. Because what's in your heart is definitely going to come out of your mouth. Ecclesiastes. Go, let's see. Ecclesiastes 5 and 6. Ecclesiastes 5 and 6. It says, Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? Don't let your mouth make you sin. Mouth. mouth. Don't let your mouth make you sin write that down don't let your mouth make you sin and then when you and then it comes out and then you try to defend it and say oh it was that was a mistake i mean you know that's just no that was the sentiments of your heart because you allow that to get into your heart it has to come out at some time and it's going to come out of your mouth Write down Job chapter 27, verse 4. Job 27 and 4. It says, My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. Lies, no evil, no lies. Ephesians 4, 29 through 30. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 and 30. It says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Don't use foul and abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful. They should, your words should be an encouragement to the one who hears them. They should not tear down. Even when, when you are disciplining, your words should not tear down. Your words should not be abusive. They should not be foul. Even when you're disciplining. Uh-huh. Because some people say, well, I have to discipline that, you know, and they just allow anything to come out of the mouth. No, that's not good. That's not tear down that well, you just stupid, you dumb, and you can't do nothing. That's abusive language. Examine your mouth. Examine your mouth. Write down Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Yes, Isaiah 50 and 4. It says, the Lord God hath given me the, me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season 
to him that, that is weary. He mm -hmm. wakeneth morning by morning. He mm -hmm. wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. The sovereign Lord has given me his words of wisdom. Okay? He's giving you a tongue of the learned. And so that I know how to comfort the weary. So I know what to say and when to say it. How to say it. Your mouth, your, your tongue is very powerful. And we got to understand that. So examine your mouth. Write down Psalm 19 and 14. Psalm 19 verse 14. It says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You are my rock. My redeemer. So let these words that come out of my mouth. Be pleasing to you. Let the meditation, things of my heart, be pleasing to you. Hmm. Examine your mouth. The last one here. Psalm 71 and 8. Psalm 71 and 8. It says, let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. And you just song where I'm going to put a praise on it. Fill your mouth with praise and therefore things that come out of your mouth just won't be wrong. <laughs> as you're trying to maintain a pretty much close uh, a normal spiritual temperature level examine your ears examine your ears are you listening to the voice of the of the world or the voice of God examine your ears hmm Take a look at, write down Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 5. Jeremiah 44 and 5. It says, but my people would not listen or turn back from their wicked ways. They kept on burning incense to those gods. They would not hark. They, they hearken not, nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness to burn incense unto other gods. Examine your ears. 2 Timothy 4 and 3. 2 Timothy 4 and 3. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. Mm -hmm. Examine your ears. Are you listening to the world? Or are you listening to the voice of God? You have to, get, that's a big thing. Sometimes we don't even think about ears. <laughs> What's that? There's a little a Bible song that we used to sing or we used to teach the kids. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. And what you, ears, what you hear. You know, hands, what, what you do. <laughs> All that. Your ears are important. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you hear. There's a father up above, and he's looking down in love. So be careful, little ears, what you hear. God, God's looking at you. That's what we tell the kids. He sees you. He knows. So be careful with your eyes and your heart and your, your, your mouth. All these things I'm being made to tell you. Be careful. Examine them all. Take a look at Second Timothy. No. Um, Proverbs 8:34. Proverbs 8:34. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. Blessed is the man that hears me, that listens to me. 
John 10 27 this is one you really should keep with you John 10 27 my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me if you're one of his one of God's you should be able to listen to his voice and know that it's no no know that it's him and follow him okay Proverbs 23 and 12 Proverbs 23 and 12 the last one here it says apply thine heart unto instruction and thine ears to the word of knowledge your ears are important we don't often talk about ears but yeah are you listening to the voice of the world are you listening to the voice of God examine your ears examine your eyes what are you looking at <laughs> mm hmm Examine your eyes. Write down Psalm 101, verse 3. Psalm 101, verse 3. It says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Refuse to look at anything that is vile or vulgar. Refuse to do it. Don't even look at it. Have nothing to do with it. Psalm 119 and 37. Psalm 119 verse 37. It says, Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy way. Turn my eyes from worthless things. And give me life through your word. No, that's what we, we should ask God for. Just turn my eyes away from this vanity. Things that are worthless. Let me see your way. Quicken me to your way. Write down Psalm 25 and 15. Psalm 25 verse 15. It says, my eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Yeah, out of the trap of my enemies. He's going to rescue you. Just keep your eyes on the Lord. Examine your eyes. And the last one here. Psalm 119, verse 136. Psalm, Psalm 119, verse 136 said rivers of water run down my eyes because they keep not thy law it should make you cry <laughs> the Lord is not pleased a lot of times we don't cry but the Lord is not pleased he weeps when we don't listen to what he says when we don't keep his commands All right. Examine your feet. Examine your feet. Where are you going? <laughs> Examine your feet. Uh, let's see. Write down Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. Says, ponder thy path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Make out a straight path for my feet. Stay on a safe path. Where are you going? Make sure that pathway is safe, is the right path. So ask God, yeah, to lead you to the right path. First John 1, verses 6 and 7. First John chapter 1, verses 6 and seven it says if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not tell and do and do not the truth but if we walk in the in the light excuse me as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanseth us from all sin
we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. Can't walk in darkness and say we have fellowship with God. Mm -mm. So where are you going? Make sure where your feet go is not dark path. Psalm 119 verses 101. Psalm 119 verses one, verse 101. It says, I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I refuse to walk down any evil path. So I can remain obedient to your word, Lord. You have to refrain from walking down an evil path. And you, you, you can pretty much tell. You can't just say, oh, it's okay. I'll be all right. I got the Lord along with me. You know, grace and mercy. They follow me. No. <laughs> no. Refrain from walking down any evil path. You see evil, turn the other way. Go. Proverbs 6, 18. Proverbs 6, uh, chapter 6, verse 18. It says, an heart that devices wicked, wicked Im imaginations. A heart that devices wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A heart that plots evil. Feet that race to do wrong that we should not embark upon okay and last one in this one is Psalm 1 verse 1 Psalm 1 verse 1 it says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Mm -hmm. That's a very familiar one. Examine your feet. Ask yourself, where are you going? All right. And the last one here, examine your hands. Examine your hands. Keep your hands clean. Write down Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4. It says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands. And a pure heart, right back at that heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Clean hands. Keep your hands clean. Examine your hands. Write down Psalm 26 and 6. Psalm 26 and 6. It says, I will wash my hands in innocency. innocency. So will I compass thine altar, O Lord. Okay, I will wash my hands to declare my innocence. Keep your hands clean. Examine your hands. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. It says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. Whatever you do, do well. Make sure your hands are clean, that you did, nothing comes off. I'm going to say that's dirty. Just make sure you keep clean hands. Examine your hands. So that means keep your hands away from dirty things. Now I'm not talking about, you know, dirt in the grass or not. Keep your keep your hands away from evil things. Keep your hands away from uh, uh, things that are not that, that won't build you up. That draw that keeps you from getting closer to God. Keep your hands away from those things. That way you don't transport anything negative, anything dirty. Keep your hands clean. What's that? 
Write down Proverbs 3.27. Just a couple more. Proverbs 3.27. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due. When it is the power, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Don't withhold good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to help them. Your hands. Your hands are just as important as your heart. Your hands are just as important as your mouth. The last one here, Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 7 and 8. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 7 and 8. It says, If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thine heart, nor shut thine hand for thy poor brother. But thou shalt open thine hand wide up unto him, and shall surely lend him sufficient for his need, and that which he wanted. Don't be stingy. <laughs> well, yeah. Don't be stingy. Examine your hands. If you your hands always closed, uh, don't want to give to the poor, don't want to help out. You know, sometimes a lot of times you just don't have the money. To give, but there are resources that you can give. Clothes, time, prayer. Don't be sent. Don't close your hand to them. Listen. Look at, take an exam all of these things. Remember that song I just gave you. Oh, be careful. Your little hands, your little eyes, your little feet, your little ears, your mouth. It doesn't say your heart, but be, the heart is a big thing. Be careful and examine yourself and make sure that you your temperature is, is right. These are the things that will keep us, that will keep us close to a normal, as normal uh, spiritual temperature as possible. Listen, and we're closing here. Okay. Our Heavenly Father wants us to be well. He does. He wants us to be well. <clears throat> Over on page in the book, page 168 and 169. At the bottom it says, Your Father doesn't have to change your situation for you to see wellness. He changes you. The Holy Spirit is working in you. And He wants you. He wants to make those changes happen. Difficult people, crazy situations, <laughs> terrible things will constantly be around us. And sometimes, it our, you know, God doesn't remove us from those things. So we need to know how to respond in those situations that are around us, in those times where we just want to, you know, call, can you just remove them out of my way? No, God might not do that. He might not change your situation, but he'll change you to be able to cope, to, 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 to deal with, to get through, to, um, to minister to. He'll help you. He'll change you. So, but you have to examine yourself. You have to be readily uh, willing and wanting him. You have to want to be well. Okay. In order for you to walk worthy in your high place, wherever that may be, in your home, on your job, in your ministry, in your life, in order for you to walk worthy, you must be well. So take time to examine yourself. Just like we go to the doctors and get exams so that we make sure that everything is all right with us. Everything is well physically. We need to examine ourselves spiritually also. Make sure that every part of us is on point and, and in line with God. Check yourself. Check your spiritual temperature often. You have to. Check it often. Whether you feel out of sorts or not. Whether you feel it, a cold coming on or not. Whether you feel like you're about to lose it or not. Check your spiritual temperature often. 
It'll keep you. It will keep you away from embarrassment. It will keep you away from the disconnect from, you know, God saying, okay, now I no longer want my hands on you. Keep, keep examining yourself. Don't wait until you feel abnormal or someone tells you mm, that something's not quite right with you. Some Something's not quite right with you. Something, what's coming out of you is, is not normal. You might be a little spiritually under the weather. You might need to check your spiritual temperature. Examine yourself. And you may, I say examine yourself daily. <laughs> Constantly examine yourself. Okay, ladies, this is all that I, we have for today. So I hope something that's been said here that we discussed will encourage you to check your temperature. To discover what your temperature is like today. So that you can be a blessing. And not a hindrance or a distraction. <laughs> okay. What comes out of you should be about God. And God should be able to be glorified in whatever comes out of you. Whether it's words. Whether it's actions. Um, a response. Whatever comes from you. God should be able to be pleased. And what is coming from you. So if you're doing something that's not pleasing to God, examine yourself, check it, ask God to change it. Okay? Before it gets bad. And then you really have to go before the Lord. Sometimes we don't want to do that. If this has been a blessing to you, and I hope it has, I ask that you let me know. It has been so awesome hearing from everyone. It's I don't want to say embarrassing, but it has been to that too. Um, hearing from different ones that let me know that they are tuning in. Um, but it's exciting, and I, I am encouraged. I'm encouraged to hear that a few of the coffee breaks are touching you, or and you're sharing them with your friends and your coworkers. I. I I thank you for that, and I really appreciate all that you have done for the coffee break. Also, if you would, um, make a contribution, make a donation to um, Pray Center for the coffee break. We would like to continue to do this work uh, with a little bit more ease, but uh, and your help is greatly appreciated, <laughs> appreciated here. Um, so make a contribution to um, Pray Center for coffee break. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful day.